Back on deck as our E-Series pit reporters tonight. All right, let's take a look at the Truck Assist starting grid. And, Maddie, another pole position for Shane Van Gisbergen in our E-Series. Yeah, his second of this series. He also has two wins next to his name. He'll have Brody Kostecki, a wild card. One of four wild cards next to him on the front row of the grid. Anton Di Pasquale, four poles and one win so far in this series. Chaz Moss at a former Bathurst 1000 winner. There is a former IndyCar champion, Indy 500 winner, Will Powell getting away from position number five. Nick Perkat and Scotty McLaughlin both have won the great race. Positions nine and ten go to Thomas Randall and Bryce Fullwood. He had his disc, uh, lap time discounted in the top ten shootout and ended up back in position number ten. As we move through midfield, Cameron Waters and Gary Jacobson. There's the Milwaukee entry of Will Davison, a former Bathurst 1000 winner, two-time in fact. Will Brown in the Penrite Racer, position 17, Jake Kostecki. Scotty Pye for DeWalt Racing has Mark Winterbottom, another former Bathurst winner next to him. A four-time great race champ, Jamie Winkup from position number 21. Macaulay Jones and Zane Goddard make up 23 and 24. 25 goes to Simona Di Silvestro. Welcome back in car number 78, the Harvey Norman Mustang this time. Rick Kelly and Jack Smith make up positions 27 and 28. And from the rear of the grid, the Coca-Cola team Sydney entry of Chris Pither. It's a great lineup of talent. Thanks for that, Matty. And a couple of other things for us to look out for tonight. Um, fast repairs are in evidence so if anybody does get damaged then they can quickly get back there unlimited for the entire third round penalties can apply during i racing and so have a look at the mega wall of drivers that you're going to see this evening and so they can accumulate those as has been outlined and we'll continue to try and highlight those for you. you've got to keep an eye out on pit lane speeding corner cutting all the things that would apply in normal racing light contact track limits losing control hard contact with another car team spotters are permitted Shane Van Gisbergen from the pole position, the Armour or pole, car number 97 for the Red Bull Holden Racing Team. Eight laps the journey, one compulsory stop. Frozen conditions, 18 degrees. It's ideal. They'll start loaded up on the clutch, on the line locker. In fact, Simona, who's in the field, had to go and purchase a clutch for the race this <laughs> evening. There is a slipstream advantage at this racetrack, particularly on that very long Conrod Strait. It's more than one kilometre as we await all of the drivers and cars to join the game. Elevation under normal circumstances here, 2,850 feet above sea level, 870 metres. They began racing here at Easter back in 1938. The track changed in 1987 for the World Touring Car Championship round. Our first enduro known as the Bathurst 1000 back in October 1963 and the revs build now as we are set to go racing. And event number eight gets underway. Nice start for Van Gisbergen. Kostecki drops into second place. And third into turn one with very cold tyres as Anton Di Pasquale and Will Power get sideways and survives. Bryce Fullwood in the mobile one and Midi's car out wide. And Nick Perkat for the second time in the evening having troubles down at turn one. Rick Kelly also turned around in the Castrol Mustang. So a bunch of people struggling in the opening turn. Perkat was a sitting duck there, but huge damage for Jamie Winkup as well. Five or six cars involved in that. Through turn two, up to the cutting for the first time. Van Gisbergen holding off Brody Kostecki. He might be a wild card, but don't forget, this is the man who set up a lot of these sim races. He's guided a lot of these guys, and Van Gisbergen has been mentored as well. So it's car number 97 versus 50, uh, 56 at the front. Anton Di Pasquale is third. Then it's Chaz Mostert, Will Power fifth, Andre Heimgartner, Scotty McLaughlin seventh, up to the top of the mountain for the first time. And this is probably the most difficult lap of the entire journey, trying to judge just exactly how hard to push on these cold tyres. In that sense, it is precisely the same as would normally be the case on a cold tyre at the start of this motor race. Now, they're starting with a theoretical fuel load. They don't go anywhere near burning the whole lot of it. Kostecki, who's on screen in the bottom right-hand corner, will be driving for Penrite Racing later this year. He's been announced as a part of the Pertec Enduro Racing squad there. And off to a great start in the Dunlop Super 2 Series earlier in the year in Adelaide. Check this out. It's a block of supercars, a wall of thunder, 300 kilometres an hour. And Will Power gets into the back of Andre Heimgartner, and there's cars all over the place mowing 
and rejoining. So Heimgartner gets back on cleanly in the net racing entry, but is he missing the rear wing? I think he was, so he pulls off for repairs. Compulsory pit stop is needed in this one, so he's dived in uh, midway through or just towards the end of the first lap. Four into the chase, just does not go. Position number four, car number 17. So Van Gisbergen's got a lead and already trouble here also at turn one for David Reynolds. He's picked up the curb on the exit of one and fires it into the wall minus the bonnet. Powers come in for his compulsory stop and repair. So has Andre Heimgartner and so has Bryce Fullwood in the background there behind the graphics. So Van Gisbergen's got a lead of just 0.2 of a second over Brody Kostecki with the Oasa batteries entry and then De Pasquale in third. Followed then by McLaughlin. Thomas Randall's got off to a nice start. Fabian Coulthard, who showed us that awesome rig that he's got a couple of weeks ago in round one of the series. And then Lee Holdsworth, Cam Waters, Will Davison, and Chaz Mostert. Top of the hill, warmer tyres down. McPhillamy. And Brody picks up the throttle for a couple of stabs just to establish that the nose was pointing precisely where he wanted it. From fourth gear, it's back to second on the run to the S's and into the dipper. And here's the replay, the BP Ultimate replay. And Will gets into the back of Andre. And that also tangles up the shell car as well. And damage to the back of car number seven. Wow. Good job by all of them to hold on. And here's Bergen over Kostecki. And joining us from the bunker in Queensland is Craig Baird, the driving standards advisor under normal circumstances for supercars racing. And as always, cold tyres and close racing equals disaster on occasion, Bairdo. Absolutely. It didn't take long, did it? But uh, we're actually going to hand out a drive-through penalty, car 17. He's run wide, got on the grass, hit the back of uh, Will Power. So uh, afraid to say, car 17 will be doing a quick run through the pit. And the weird part about that is the tr transit time through the pit lane is actually 17 seconds here. So it's, it's not a massive penalty, but uh, he's going to have to serve one. Thanks for the update, Craig. And Nash Morris in the background there helping with duties in the bunker as well. So a penalty over the top of Scott McLaughlin. And his spotter will be keeping him up to speed. He's keeping an eye on data, watching the penalty, rear view mirror as well. OK, I haven't heard anything, mate. Listen in. So That's BS, man. Apparently, you might have a drive-through. This might relate to what we saw last weekend in Spain, where Max Verstappen and Anton Di Pasquale got together as a result of a bit of the lag that can appear in the game. Because you've got Will Power playing from Charlotte, North Carolina. You've got Scott McLaughlin from the Gold Coast, Queensland. And a game in iRacing that fundamentally hubs out of North America. So there's a lot of computer complexity in all of this but he has been judged to have made a mistake on the run into the bottom of the chase. So you heard Scotty say it was BS, which is code for not happy with that decision. And so car number 17, which is currently sitting in third position, Shelby Power Racing entry, McLaughlin will take a penalty as a result. So the margin between first and second bank is Bergen. And now Deep Pasquale has opened up ever so slightly. So that's 1.7 seconds. And Brody has actually come in for his stop. And the boys are standing by in Melbourne for a Pertec pit report, Chad Nalon and Jonathan Simon. Observations. Uh, observations, crazy start, Crompo, to this one, as probably expected. Uh, yeah, early pit stop for Brody Kostecki, so looking for something of an undercut on Shane Van Gisbergen. And how quick were those drivers to, Jonathan, try and react to what was happening with the crash that happened at the chase? Oh, yeah. we've got more drama here, Jonathan, at the elbow. Was that McLaughlin or was that, that the was, 12? That was Fabian. That might have been cool, Dad. Yeah, Fabian. so that was cool, Dad, into the wall. But very smart from Heimgartner. He cut the track of the chase after the incident, would have received a slowdown penalty, and by pitting, he's cleared the slowdown. So he actually hasn't lost any time apart from that. McLaughlin coming in now, and he is absolutely blowing up to his engineer. Wasn't too happy about getting a drive-through for that one. Thanks, boys. We'll keep in touch with you through the evening to keep an eye on what's going on. We had a glimpse there of Anton Di Pasquale. We're watching Scott McLaughlin unhappy about the fact that he's been judged to have made a mistake on the run into the chase and got into the back of Will Power. We'll keep your eyes up, understanding what's going on. Mobile One Racing Appliances Online. Car number 25, Chas Mostert, who's been a Bathurst winner in reality back in 2014 in one of the wildest races ever at Mount Panorama. The big story in the summer season was his shift 
across to Walkinshaw Andretti United, and that's him working away at the wheel in the bottom right-hand corner of screen. He's got Scott Pye behind him in the DeWalt entry. Now, I spoke earlier today to Anton Di Pasquale, and uh, he was blueing about the fact that he lost his engineer and spotter in Brody Kostecki. So he said, I'm not only losing a right-hand man, I'm actually going to have to race this bloke. So <laughs> he and Shane are both moaning about the fact that Brody's pretty handy at this. So we'll see whether or not his early pit stop is going to convert for him. He is the first in the queue at the moment that's actually taken a stop. So it's about 17 plus seconds to transit the lane, plus about eight seconds to be able to rattle on new Dunlop tyres. Trying to get to the bottom of Scott McLaughlin, that uh, drive-through penalty that he has received. He hasn't taken it yet, though. He's done his stop, but he hasn't taken his drive-through. And under normal circumstances, I don't have my Supercars Ops manual next to me, but I think you've got to respond to those commands within four laps. That is an unbelievable shot of Anton Di Pasquale on the run through the chase. 300 kilometres an hour, more than 80 metres with every passing second. And look at the way in which he pitches the car into a slide, into the left-hander at the bottom of the chase. Some of them are choosing to try and stroke through there in third. Others are going back into second gear. And Anton heads into the pit lane as we pick up on Alex Davis and local legends car number 19. And he's battling Brody Kostecki here, car number 56, with two Dunlop Super 2 Series race victories so far in 2020. And a great battle that he's already having with Thomas Randall. And he leads the Dunlop Super 2 Series. And so we're looking forward to seeing him in the main game later in the year. And... Uh, we saw him at Bathurst last year, so very little in the way of genuine Bathurst mileage, although he's done Super 2 mileage at Mount Panorama as we pick up on Shane Van Gisbergen now in the lane for his compulsory stop. And Kostecki up to turn one, and then Shane Van Gisbergen just gets out in front of him. Uh, so that's, that was the key moment there to see whether or not he actually did get the benefit of the undercut or whether clear air was serving Shane well. Now, the issue for Shane is he goes out on a cold tyre and Brody's on the full attack on a warm tyre. So from fifth gear back to third gear, right hand to turn two at Griffin's Bend, at just a touch of oversteer mid-corner. There's an enormous amount of positive camber through turn two, and then it's a blind approach through three, up into four at the cutting, second gear. And this track is mapped exactly like Mount Panorama, with a little jump there as you just shift from second to third on the run up towards Reed Park, and then here at the crest of the hill, third to fourth gear, hovering around 200 kilometres an hour. Metal great, depicted realistically. Again, speeds around 200 odd kilometres an hour, and then building up the speed on the run towards McPhillamy from 215 k's. The cars in reality jump onto two wheels, and then a blind approach over the top of Skyline. Feet at third, feet at second, dance on the brake pedal, get it through the dipper, on two wheels and out the other side. Second to third gear for another blind approach to Forest Elbow, back to second gear, and one of the equally slowest corners on the corner, 85 kilometres an hour, and then on to one of the most pleasurable bits of tarmac in global motorsport onto Conrod Strait. Now, before we continue to get too gleeful about this, back to the boys in Melbourne. Chad, Jonathan. Well, just a quick one. I was keeping an eye on an ear on Brody Kostecki, and he was fuming driving up Mountain Strait. Absolutely furious at Chris Pither for holding him up down Conrod Strait. He feels like it cost him only one problem. It wasn't Chris Pither. It was actually Alex Davison, but he was properly angry. He felt like that he got held up, and it's cost him any chance of taking the lead. Thanks for the update on that. It's good for you guys to keep an ear on what's going on in the background. Appreciate it. In fact, earlier in the week in the IndyCar e-racing series, Will Power and Scott McLaughlin were in a vigorous battle at Matagi in Japan, and they got tripped over with some lap traffic and cost them the battle for the lead. There was a bit of emotion spilling over in that one as well. So Van Gisbergen's got the lead by a tiny margin from his mate in car number 56, Brody Kostecki. And he said to Jess at the top of the show, I kind of regret mentoring this guy. He's going too well at the moment. Scott McLaughlin in position number four there still hasn't taken that drive-through penalty. Of course, Brody Kostecki still hasn't taken his first stop. Correction, he has. So that is real. Shane Van Gisbergen has a half a second lead over Kostecki. Anton Di Pasquale third. Then McLaughlin. Asterix next to his name. He's going to have to trundle through pit lane in the next lap and a half. Thomas Randall, Will Power, Chaz Mostert, Bryce Fullwood, Scotty Pye and Mark Winterbottom make up our top ten. And Craig Baird has sent through the photograph to me of the position of Scott McLaughlin into the back of Will Power and, and the image is pretty damning. So uh, thanks for the update from Queensland there. Um, 
the series so adjudication going on the digitally technology. in the background as well. Thanks, Berto. Technological genius, Berto. That's right. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Todd Hazelwood on screen here, car number 14 being chased by his teammate Nick Perkat. These two flying the flag for Brad Jones Racing. There's the Monster Energy Mustang of Cam Waters. Funny conversation with him earlier today. He said he's never been heavily into the game previously. He's done a little bit of it, but he said, when I get out of it, I'm genuinely sweating. I have to wash my race suit. That's how hard I'm working. Now, Todd and Nick are on screen here, down the order a little bit at the moment, but they're in a fantastic battle for 12th and 13th, and they're listening in the background, believe it or not. It's a good evening and welcome, Nick Perkat and Todd Hazelwood. Mate, you couldn't have joined at a more juicier <laughs> time between us, I tell you what. We're only watching each other out at pit exit. I keep looking up, he's in me toes, so you, you put me at a time. Yeah. Come on, Nelson. Let's go, mate. Come on. He's hiding behind the steering wheel, Todd, so keep an eye on him in the mirror. He's half a chance to do something crazy at the bottom of the chase here. They've actually got the eyes on when they're trying to talk and drive. It's not an easy thing to do at any stage. He's got me right in my whip at the moment. It's on. <laughs> so where's he making ground on you, Todd? How's he doing it? Um, look, we're pretty close at the moment, so uh, we both fitted a lot within each other, so tyres about the same. Um, he's got a little bit on me uh, in the chase, I think. So seemed to be good across the top, so... Um, uh, yeah, and he's in my boat, so we're going to try and yeah. shake him a little bit. All right, we're quick, going for Macca. quick ride of reply yeah, from uh, Nick in the yeah, Dunlop Super Dealers entry. Where where can you get him, mate? You're going to get some benefit of the draft. There's apparently a good second to be had here. Watch, watch this. We're watching. Oh. oh, no. <laughs> Maybe wrong one. Should have had a second. Nearly rattled right him. All right, <laughs> and they're chasing their teammate, Macaulay Jones, in the foreground in the cool drive entry. So the plus fitness Commodore there of Todd Hazelwood. Thanks for talking to us, boys. We'll check in later on. Brad Jones is throwing things at his there. television screen at the moment. Make sure that you knuckleheads do not run into each other on channeling his thoughts. It's a lot of fun. We picked him up right at the right time too. They're having an absolute cracking duel and we've got it right at the elbow where everything's slightly busy as you well know, Crompo. And the thing is, you uh, wouldn't matter whether you're in a game or a race car or whatever, the last thing you want is one of us talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell straight away they're like, oh, no, it's him. Good to see Nelson back there at the home of Nick Perkat, licking his lips again, doing absolutely nothing. He'll be there for the entire night. So this battle that we've just focused on is for positions 12 and 13 at the front. It's a 0.7 of a second lead for Shane Van Gisbergen over Brody Kostecki. Anton Di Pasquale looking for another podium. He's been so rock solid. Shane Van Gisbergen has already had two wins and here comes Scott McLaughlin for his drive through penalty. The Shell V Power Racing Team, this takes him out of the top ten. And remember, Matt, he came into this evening's proceedings in a strong position in the championship with a 55-point leadership margin, 501 points to his credit. So the reason he's lamenting the drive-through penalty is that one of the things in this game, as it is in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, is you've got to be consistent. And you do a drive-through penalty, and the transit through here is 17 and a half odd seconds. It's going to plummet you down the order. The DeWalt entry, the Holden Commodore on screen of Scott Pye. He's had a couple of second placings on the podium at Mount Panorama and he's being hunted at the moment by Bryce Fullwood and they're feeding back out with Scotty McLaughlin having taken that penalty and Bryce in the Mobile One Midi's entry tucked in behind in car number two with all that damage early on. This looks good up at turn two. Scott Pye does not want to yield but McLaughlin's got a better line on the inside. Remember next race, race nine of the series, another eight laps but a reverse grid race. Now Pye has Bryce Forward on the outside at the cutting. So Van Gisbergen stretches his lead out the front. It's now out to a second. You're looking at third place. A great shot of the Penrite racer Erebus Motorsport of Anton Di Pasquale and Anzac Day livery for both cars. For Anton and Davey Reynolds, a former Bathurst 1000 champion back in the E-Series after sitting out round two. Will Brown filled in for him and did a solid job as well this for the ride down Conrod for the final time in this eighth race of the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. Another victory going towards the Kiwi of Shane Van Gisbergen as he arrives on cue through the chase. Brody Kostecki, what a sensational job. Wild card entry and Anton Di Pasquale rock solid yet again. Beautiful drive by Van Gisbergen who's had 13 starts in the great race. 
twice he's been runner-up including last year 2014 was stolen from him as a potential victory but he has done an awesome job tonight to grab 75 points and he takes a victory a narrow margin over Brody Kostecki who's done an awesome job as expected followed by Anton Di Pasquale in position three that is your podium Thomas Randall he's a great young guy and a great race driver and he's already off to a ripping start in the Dunlop Super 2 Series in 2020 he comes home in fourth as a wild card entry for this evening followed by Chaz Mostert Will Power recovering from damage not a bad recovery also for Scotty McLaughlin Mark Winterbottom next in eighth position Macaulay Jones did a fine job in ninth and Nick Perkat managed to get the job done on to uh, Todd Hazelwood and rounds out our top 10. We'll have those provisional results for you in just a tick. That's a beautiful look at the run up towards the top of Mountain Straight and Turn 2 and what is normally a public road at Mount Panorama. BP Ultimate results, there they are on the screen for you. So three quarters of a second was the gap between Shane Van Gisbergen and Brody Kostecki in the final analysis. And all that torturing for Nick Perkat, Matty paid off because he got there in the end, but they didn't quite get to Macaulay Jones. Yeah, so that's the third win in this series for Van Gisbergen, the fourth podium for Anton Di Pasquale. And there's Andre Heimgartner down back in position number 23. That's the first time all series that he's been outside of the top 10, the only driver who's finished.